yeah, we, we after the games, everybody's getting a lot of text messages, and then yesterday on campus, everybody's saying hi, congratulations. So, you know, people are very excited, and you know, I talked to a lot of people, and they said they're going to make the trip down, which is which is very exciting. We're going to have a good fan base down down in Pittsburgh. Has it been annoying having to share this with the guys nine miles down the road? Do you, are you going to be rooting for Yale on their side of the bracket? Uh, we were joking the other other night about you know potentially playing Yale in in the finals and it'd be nice but whoever it is you know, we're just going to prepare like it's anybody else and just take it game by game and if it happens to be Yale then it still be. Do you, do you know any of the guys on Yale that you're interested in? Uh, um, no I, I personally don't know anybody on Yale but I know a bunch of guys on the, on the team know each other so. I keep on asking you know what people know. Don't yeah. Uh, <laughs> Could you elaborate? <laughs> nah, well we used to know uh, Chad Ziegler who, who played there last year so he, he's been in contact with me and We've kind of been texting each other back and forth and just kind of uh, making fun of each other, per se. But other than that, no, no, nobody within the current roster. How much do you guys not like each other as a team? Uh, I think it's built up more than it is. There is a little rivalry there, but I think it's built up a little bit more. Uh, but we, like I said, we're going to take uh, every, every game one by one first, and then if it's Yale, it's Yale. Kevin, how have you handled it? I mean, you know, obviously everyone wants to play. Yeah. You haven't played a lot in your career. How have you handled that, not playing a lot, and then just being ready to go when you are on the ice? Uh, the assistant coaches have, you know, been been a big part of uh, who I am today, just doing extra work with them on and off the ice. But when I'm not playing, then I have to, you know, do extra work. And they've been a big part of my development. So I give credit to, you know, Reed Cashman, uh, Ben Sire is no longer here with us, and uh, uh, Billy Riga. Is it frustrating at times you're not on the ice or mean or are you? You know, a, a, as a player, you you always want to play, and it, it gets frustrating at times, but it builds character and makes you better in the end. And I wouldn't, if I could change anything, I don't think I would change anything at all. You become that guy, I mean, a lot of times in the postseason, there's a guy nobody expects to score goals, and you become that guy the last couple of games. Yeah, I'm just trying to go out there and uh, do my best, and like I said, you know, just being in the right places at the right time, and you know, everybody on the team is working really hard right now. Do you have any? I mean, it, to pick up on that question, numerically, you don't have a lot of goals, but you scored this colossal goal. Are, are you? Do you think you're calmer than uh, because the expectations are lower, or, or is there something in your mind saying like, you know, I can just snipe one here, or what, what's kind of? Uh, you're no, I. I I take every shift one by one, and I just go out there and try to. Actually, my goal is to play well defensively and create a lot of energy as a fourth line player. That's what Corey and I talked about. You know, we're not out there to score goals. If we get a goal, it's it's a bonus, but we're out there to be uh, play well defensively, make sure the puck doesn't stay in our zone, and go out there and create energy and you know hit the hit the opposing team. Can you tell us about your head coach? Our head coach? Yeah, Rand. Yeah, I don't know. No, I. Coach has been awesome, and he's uh, he's uh, been you know been a big success to this program, obviously. And um, you know this year he his demeanor has has changed as you know he's you know a little bit more calm on the bench, and you know he's keeping us calm, especially in a Kanisha situation. That game, you know, we were down, and he just told us he said. You know, keep calm. Just get do the little things. Get the pucks on that, and we'll get our goals, and we're gonna win this game. And you know, we we gotta look up to him. He's our leader, uh, not on the ice, but as the coach, he's our leader, and we, we look to him for guidance. Does that really matter in the Canisius game tonight? Yes, yes, it is because uh, I can, can compare the Canisius game to the Brown game, where we kind of panicked a little bit, and we didn't really quite listen to coach. And again, we listened to coach in the Canisius game, and the bench was calm. Do you worry about that happening? Uh, no, I believe the team that showed up against Union will be there for the next two games. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of pressure because it is a frozen four, but uh, we had a meeting today where coach said, you know, it's nice to be at the frozen four, but we're not there to be at the frozen four. We're there to be, win a national championship, and that's what we're going to go do. Kevin, some of these other guys were here talking about Hartzell, and um, Matt Peck said, oh, he's definitely a goal, he's got a lot of weird rituals. Can you just tell us a little bit about the personality of the guy that Oh, jeez, where do, where, where do I begin? He's actually my roommate. I, I live with the, with the guy. Um, 
Oh, well, where do we start? Let's start with the reggae music. <laughs> Awful taste in music, I tell you. <laughs> that thing, his music is going on 24-7 at the rink and at home, so I think everybody gets to listen to his music and only his music. Uh, but you know, Eric, we're all weird in our own ways, and Eric, Eric's special, and he, he keeps the house entertained and light. He keeps the dressing room light. Are you a babysitter? Uh, I would have to, you would have to talk to Zach Curry about that one. <laughs> Last question. Um, how does sitting out for the season lose your lifetime affect you? Like, it's hard to come back? Yeah, you know, when I remember that day when Coach pulled me in and said, Kevin, uh, you know, we, we have to cut our roster because of Title IX. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you're the odd man out. And that was, that was a tough day for me because, you know, you, you don't want to hear that, that you're getting released from the team that you, you know, made a commitment to. But uh, coach said, I, want, I really love you as a guy, as a person, and I want you to be here next year. Just, you know, we just, with everything going on, we have to reduce the roster. And you know, I, it, I got better because of it. You know, uh, Coach B, I worked with Coach B a lot that season, working out five times a week, six times a week, trying to get stronger, because I, I didn't come in the strong, as the strongest guy. And Coach B really uh, propelled me into that next level, so where I could compete with, you know, guys. Oh, you know, it's made me who I am today. So, you know, I'm glad I took that year off. And if I wasn't, if I didn't, I wouldn't be here today. Did, did you stay around the team though when you were off, or did you kind of? Yeah, uh, you know, I was I was around the guys. I, I wasn't allowed to participate in practices or team functions, but um, I was almost there as a as a manager, and you know, just being around the guys was was nice.